Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. For Father's Day this year, I got a pretty awesome gift for my wife and kids, a 3D printer. Now I've been looking at these 3D printers for the last couple of years and I've just never pulled the trigger on getting one and I really wish I would have done it earlier, but I'm super happy with what they bought me. So in an effort to kind of spice things up for you guys a little bit, get away some from the stoves and the reviews, we're gonna do a little bit of 3D printing and I'm gonna show you guys some of the things you can do when it comes to the outdoors, bushcraft, hiking, backpacking, things you can print on your 3D printer to make your time outdoors better. Stay tuned, today we're gonna start with making handles for your ferro rods. We're gonna design them and print them. Thanks for watching, guys. <music> 3D printers allow you to take programs like what I use, which is Fusion 360. This is an Autodesk product and it's free to use for personal use. And you can basically create anything you want. It's like magic. Now I've made handles for ferro rods before here on the channel using my wood lathe. Now here's the deal, not everybody has a wood lathe, not everybody knows how to use a wood lathe, not everybody has the space for a wood lathe. In fact, right now in my current shop, I don't have space for my wood lathe, it's in storage. So let's say that you want to make your own handle for your ferro rod. You want to make it custom, so how hard is it to 3D print it? Well first, let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you just how easy it is to design your own. All you need is the program itself, your ferro rod, and you wanna get yourself some calipers. Digital calipers, I think, are better so you can measure real accurately. This is Fusion 360, it's free. Like I said, I am not by any means a expert. I've been using Fusion 360 now for about probably three to four weeks. And if you're looking for a way to just make a real basic, simple design, this will give you an idea. We're gonna start with a one quarter inch or eight millimeter ferro rod, okay? You wanna pick one of your planes and I'm just right clicking here. And you'll do create sketch. So first we're gonna to wanna to create the exterior circle, okay? So I'm gonna hit C for circle. And this will, you can see, you can either space it out or type in. Now we're gonna make this uh, 10 millimeters. Now what we wanna do is extrude that out and create the length of our ferro rod handle. You'll understand a little bit better here in a second. So you can see we can go forward here. So we're gonna make this 40 millimeters. This particular ferro rod is fairly long, so I wanna make a little bit of a longer uh, handle for it. Now there's a couple things. You can leave it rounded like this, or you can kind of give it an angle, and that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna go here to edit feature and you can go here to this taper angle and we can see like if I do a real aggressive angle like eight, you can see that it really gets fairly uh, wide. Uh, but we're not gonna do that much. We're just gonna go with say like four maybe. That, that seems good, just a small angle taper for your hand. Um, now the next thing we'll do is we'll taper this end. So we'll click on the edge here well, there we go. Take a clip on the edge and we'll get our uh, design shortcuts. And we're gonna put a chamfer on this. And the chamfer we're gonna do, say two millimeters. You'll see how that creates a little chamfer there. And that's just a nice little touch, I think. So we will hit okay. Next thing we'll do is create a hole in here for our lanyard. So you go over here to create hole and it gives you this crazy business right here. So when we grab this, it'll allow us to pick our hole. So five millimeters is gonna be the diameter, and then I want it to go all the way through. So we'll click here and it'll go all, and hit okay. And you can see now that it's got a five millimeter hole through the whole thing. So we're getting really close to the end of this one. Now what we need to do next is a place to actually stick the ferro rod into. So we'll click this uh, circle here, this edge, and we will create a sketch. This kind of puts it into 2D. And once again, we're gonna hit C for circle. And this is gonna be the diameter of our ferro rod. It's about 6.4 millimeters. So you don't need to give it much room. We're gonna put 6.45 millimeters. And that's gonna be where the uh, ferro rod slips into. So we'll grab that, okay, and hit extrude. And once again, you can go, you know, if you extrude positively, you're gonna bring this out like that, which is basically what our ferro rod will look like. But we want to go negative, so we'll click on here, hit negative, 
and we're going to go back negative about 15 millimeters okay and now we basically have our ferro rod okay you can see it'll slide right into there and you'll be able to hold it very easily whoops okay so now that we have it finished okay we're going to export it we need to export it as an STL file that's how we will uh, print it so you go first thing you need to do to export it I have not saved this yet so you have to save it to be able to export it so this is a ferro rod but it's a quarter inch and we're just going to put ferro rod one quarter save it so now it's saved and now what we need to do is we need to export it as a 3d print so grab it right here hit 3d print and select the body which is this entire thing uh, we do not want to send to 3d printer we're just going to save it and it is being saved as an stl hit ok and i'm just going to put it on the desktop for now and we'll call it ferro rod one quarter okay and that is saved okay now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a different one for a 5 16 so we're going to make it a little bit different and i think you guys will like it we'll do a little bit of a different take on it so we'll hit new design once again you want to get your origins that's how i do it and create a sketch we're going to start once again with a circle this one's going to be a little bit smaller because the overall length of the ferro rod is uh, is smaller so we're going to make this one 12 millimeters wide do it in grab it extrude and we're going to extrude it 30 millimeters and there you have your 30 millimeter extrusion next thing we'll do is add a little bit of a taper just like we did last time edit the feature we're going to give it a little bit more of a taper let's go with like six so it's a little bit more of a taper and this time we're going to do a rounded end so grab this and this is the rounded this is the chamfer so we'll do a rounded and let's see what kind of fillet we want there's a two there's a three so that's a pretty pronounced rounding over but i think pretty nice you'll see this one's a lot smaller ferro rod next we'll add our hole right here the size we want to make it five millimeters again and we're going to go all that's the easy way to make it go all the way through just like that and the last thing we need to do is uh, we're going to add a little chamfer i think it'll it'll look kind of nice if we add a little chamfer here so we'll select we'll hit chamfer just a small one maybe one millimeter just to add a little bit of detail and then on this face we will create a sketch do a circle again this one's going to be 8.05 8.05 millimeters okay there you go we'll grab that wait finish sketch and we will extrude it with the e and we're going to go negative 10. okay and there is our next and second ferro rod so we're going to save this one and i actually have one already that's the 516 so i'm just going to overwrite that and we're going to 3d print stl we'll grab it hit ok and on the desktop we will call this one ferro rod 5 16 and now if we go onto our desktop we should have ferro rod one quarter and ferro rod 5 16 now if you're curious how i print these i use the ultimaker cura so we'll grab on to that let it load up you can see how easy this is guys you can really you know learn it fairly simply so this is uh, a representation of my 3d printer bed we'll go over here and grab these two right off the desktop we're going to print them at the same time It'll take a little longer but we'll do it that way and i will move them so that it's a little easier to see them when they're printing be right next to each other just like that see the hole on that side now we will do a couple things up here we're going to hit no support we should not need any support and you can determine the amount of infill that you want 
Uh, I found that 20% infill, even for something like this, is plenty, plenty strong. If you want it to be a little bit stronger, you can go ahead and do that. So now we'll hit slice and let's see. So 57 minutes for both. It's going to use six grams. It's about two cents a gram, so 12 cents to uh, do both of these. I'm going to save this to my disk, put it into my 3D printer and see how it looks printing. Let's see how these turn out and then we will install them and glue them into our ferro rods. So here are our two pieces. You can see how they look. We'll look at one first here. Very, I mean, these things are strong. Okay, they're not going anywhere. And the smaller one. Now, usually I can get these to fit almost friction fit. Now I can um, glue them in, but if you just pop them in, they're not gonna go anywhere. There it is. This thing, I can, I can pull it out, but you can hear how tight it is. And I probably will put a dab of glue in there, but I don't need to right now, especially just to show you guys how it looks. So there's one. The other is a much longer quarter inch. And we just slide that in as well. Boom, just like that. And you can see again how tight a fit it is. I find this to be very comfortable. You know, it's a little bit longer, very skinny. Uh, I like to have all kinds of different ferro rods. This one I bought for some Mora uh, knife prints that I'm going to do later on and uh, show you guys those as well. But you can see how comfortable these are. Very simple to make. A couple of other ones that I've made already. I made one in black. You can see how it looks with the little bit of shock cord on there. Here's another one. A little bit different, a little bit thinner. These are glued in completely. Here's one I made for a square uh, ferro rod. It just you just make a square in there instead of a instead of a circle, uh, but very nice as well. Put this so you can see it. And lastly, I've got just a couple of this is a half inch ferro rod, and I made a couple of different um, models. This is just uh, straightforward little black one. And then one that's an orange one that also fits very, very well. These are straightforward, no uh, taper or anything like that. But you can see how easily you can make the ferro rod handles. You can make them out of any color you want. Uh, you can make them with uh, a lanyard hole, no lanyard hole, all kinds of stuff. And I'm going to be experimenting. These are the, the most basic that I could come up with, but I'm going to be experimenting with more. If you guys are interested in those videos, let me know. Now, in case you're wondering what type of 3D printer I have, it is the Creality Ender 3 Pro. Now, I've made some adjustments to it. I've added things to it. I added a silent board, for example, but you can buy a stock version for about $220. I've probably added about $80 worth of accessories, so about $300 all in for my particular 3D printer, and I can tell you guys I get excellent results. I've had very few print failures. You saw one today, and that was my fault because I had done two prints in a row and I didn't put down glue on the printing bed, and that's why it you know, came off and it started to create a lot of uh, angel hair pasta. I'm amazed at the quality of the prints that I can get off of a budget 3D printer like this. This, this really is an introductory 3D printer, and it's a, it's a price point that I think many people can afford. The possibilities are endless, and at this point, they're really limited by my ability to 3D model. Thankfully, there's a lot of really generous people on the internet. There's a uh, website called Thingiverse. I'll leave a link down below. They have all kinds of outdoor related prints you can do. Check it out down below. Just looking at them might get you interested in picking up a 3D printer. I do have several more videos planned. I'm gonna do one on uh, accessories you can make for your Mora knives. I'm also gonna do one just generally kind of a top 10 outdoor related 3D prints. So stay tuned for those. I think you'll really like them. I will be trying to upload these uh, designs up to Thingiverse just for fun if anybody out there is interested, but you saw just how easy it is 
to do your own. So like I said, our next video in 3D printing, it's not gonna be my next video out, but it'll be the next one that I do on 3D printing, is how to pimp your Mora with all kinds of awesome 3D prints. If there's any specifics you guys are interested in as far as me experimenting either 3D printing or even, God forbid, trying to design my own gear, just leave it in the comments. I'll see what I can do, maybe print it out or try to design it. Who knows? This is definitely something that's gonna take me many years to figure out and master, but I can do a couple of 3D printing videos a year here on the channel just to keep things interesting. If you guys do like this video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. It really helps me understand what you guys like and it helps spread things across YouTube, which in the end, ultimately what I'm hoping for is for more and more people to watch my videos. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss any videos, whether they be 3D printing videos or any of the other awesome videos we do here on the channel, hit that notification bell and you will be the first to know. As I said, let me know, give me some feedback. Do you find this kind of video interesting? And if you do, what kind of prints do you wanna see me take on? As always guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.